It doesn't matter if it's my garden, my flowers, my bushes, my bonsai, it doesn't matter. I love propagating. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and find some hydrangeas to propagate. And I'm out here in my shade garden, which I'll show you in just a second. No judgments, it's overgrown, but we're doing that on purpose. These are about the second year I've had this bush and this bush. You can see this is all just shade garden. It gets hardly any sun. So this is going to be a good thing for the shady spot. So we're going to come in here and I don't know if you don't know a lot about hydrangeas, they start off pink, but it, depending on your soil, they'll turn by the acidity, they'll turn different colors. So my soil is very acidic. So I just let them go blue, I'm not really stressing about it too much. But for these, we, we don't want to clip anything that's got a flower growing on it. Okay. So actually I'm letting these dry on here so then I can use them as decoration inside of my house. But you want to trim stuff like this. Okay, it doesn't have a flower, it's not budding, but you can take little clips off of it. The benefit of doing this is, first of all, you want to cut it about that long. Give it a couple inches. Is once you clip these, the energy goes up to the top of the plant and where it was clipped, and then it goes back down and it'll cause it to bush out. And that's what we want to do. We want this to bush out, we want it to take up more space. So I'm just going to get a bunch of clippings. I might pull out this weed. I know, I know. You want to do the work too. See what my cat does? Always hindering the process. All right, so I'm going to do another plant and then we're going to go find something different. Once you get your first plants clipped, so I like to just do all of my clipping and then get them in at the same time. But the trick is you do not want these to dry out at all. So I'm going to take you back to the potting station, workstation, whatever you want to call it, and show you what I'm going to do in the meantime while I go finish clipping. Because if they dry out now, then you're done. They're very tender at this point. So you've basically removed them from the plant. So we need to keep them alive. Here's my little uh, station. You can see I've got my stuff ready, but I have this pan of water and I just take and you want to make sure that the cut end is in the water. That's all. And this will help keep it hydrated until you can get them all in. So I'll have this filled up with water and you can see that I've had something else in there. And I usually keep things in this pan of water at all times back here. And here's some that I've already done in the back and try and get some lantana. So lantana is a, um, is a sun loving plant. It's a low growing shrub, low ish growing flowerish shrub. I'm not sure technically what it is, but it's like a, it's a, it's considered one of the Southern classics. So the, the key with these are though, when you plant them, by seed, you never know exactly what you're going to get as far as color. So once you get them in your yard, if you take cuttings from them, you know what flower color you're going to get. So we can now say like I've got orange and pink. So I want orange in some sections, pink in some others, and then this will help you get it. And see, we have orange flowers. And so we're just going to do the same thing and try and find some that are not um, blooming at the ends. And it may be kind of tough. They're a couple years old as well. What we may end up doing is just clipping some and seeing if we can't actually get them to grow, even though they have the buds on them. And I'll, again, I'm going to show you all of that process. Now I'm leaving some leaves here so it can continue to grow and it'll shoot out again. So it'll cause this plant to spread even more. So we're just going to go around and see this one right here, this one is an issue. It's hanging out in the yard, what have you. We can't really control it. So this will be a really good one. So we're actually going to, I'll clip here, here, and here, and why not here? We're gonna go back to the water. Now I'm gonna go out and do the same. I'm gonna go find some pink stuff. So just so you can see what's going on here, I did these earlier in the year. These are all uh, hydrangeas. 
and you can see that we are getting new growth and I've had these for a while and they just sit here because they love the shade anyway. So you don't really need to move them in too much of a different spot. Uh, to get more sun but what i'll probably end up doing is I'll end up giving them a little bit more the lower the sun gets for the fall and i'll end up putting them in their spot to sit for the winter or actually depending if the roots are coming through the bottom which i don't see any uh, then i would put them in the ground this fall and let them get nice and comfortable and they may that may actually happen i haven't decided completely yet but so they've been sitting here for a couple months and then back here are some lavender that I did. I did a whole bunch of lavender last year and I didn't have a whole lot take, but we definitely have one, two, three, four, five more lavender plants going. So I'll put those into the smaller pots or maybe even bigger pots for the winter because what I did last year, I used these pots and you can see the difference in size. And it just didn't work out well because even though I started them late in the year, they filled up completely and they couldn't retain any more water. Generally speaking, plants have two main growth stages. They grow in the spring, then they kind of go dormant when it gets really hot, and then they'll start growing again in the fall. So we're right on the edge of that, which is why I want to do this now. Because we still have a couple months left of nice warm weather, so we can get, you know, we can have plenty of time to get these things to start sprouting roots and to get comfortable in their pots. We just make our holes that we're gonna stick the pot in. So it's important that you pre-wet everything. I'm using regular potting soil for this. And like, let's take this one for instance, this is a hydrangea, okay? So we're gonna clean up this stem because the roots are gonna come out of here. So we're just gonna clean up the stem and you have to remember, there's not a lot of roots or any roots, as a matter of fact. So you don't want a whole lot that's going to put demand on it. And then we're going to take it and cut the leaves in half. And this will reduce the demand on the new root system that will develop. And that's how you do the hydrangea. And then we just stick it right in deep as it'll go and then for the lantana so it's the same idea we're going to clean it up this one's a little different because it has buds on it so you also want to come through and pull the buds off because that's putting demand too and this is so important it's easy not to realize to do this because you need balance. Why I like propagating because you need to determine the balance that you need within the plant. You can't put more demand on the root system, especially a root system that's not there. So you need to be in balance with it. So the saying goes as below as above. So you don't really have any roots, but you want to make roots and the leaves feed the plant. What we do, is we leave some leaves so it'll continue to feed the plant and make the roots but at the same time we don't want to put that demand on it so when the first roots come it's not sitting there screaming give me more food give me more food i want more 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 that's not really what we want to do i have a feeling that once you get into this mode of creating balance with your plants you become more in tune to what a plant needs and you start to understand and how the plant grows right you, i mean we all like to look at it and that's all fine and dandy but understanding how a plant grows is really important and that's what will make it so you can be successful and really have the garden you thrive for now this is a time consuming process so there is that and what i mean by time consuming is you're not going to get instant results and have a full-blown plant the next year but you're going to be on your way because i think when i bought these lantanas the hydrangeas were 30 dollars for probably twice as big as this super expensive but by letting it grow for a couple years you now have 
for free. I mean, what I have three dollars on potting soil and 15 cents in pots. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ready to go. There's a big difference there. We're done with this. What, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna again, utilize this tray as much as I can and set these in the water. And I'm gonna set them in the water for probably a week or so. And if it rains, fine. If it dries up, fine. I know that it's hot, so this will dry up in probably about a week. So I'm not overly worried about it. But that's the whole point of this spot. And if you can't do that, then you're gonna have to water it, but you wanna keep it in the shade. Super important that we keep it in the shade. That's the number one thing is keep it in the shade for a while. Let it get a little bit of sun after a little bit. It'll start shooting roots and you'll notice some new growth. I mean, remember I trimmed all of the leaves back. So that's new growth. You know, I see new leaves, so I know that they've made it. This one is not shooting out new growth yet necessarily, but it definitely looks good. It's not wilting or anything. So that's not really an issue. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you the different places that I wanna work on. This bed right here is kind of just a really rough bed. We've got some like random bamboo coming up. So I wanna pull that out and I wanna put the hydrangeas in there back in that back corner to kind of anchor it. And then in the front, there's a pink lantana. I wanna put some more pink lantanas in there and kind of fill up that section in the back corner. And then we can come over here to this part. And I'm not really looking to do anything super crazy with this. We're gonna be removing a lot of brush soon. So keep an eye out in the background of the videos and I'll definitely do something about that, but we're gonna be removing a lot of this brush. We just came across a brush cutter. So this will be a good spot back here to put the hydrangeas as an anchor to kind of separate the woods from our property. And we're gonna try and do that as much as we can going forward over the years. But, and then another section is over here, that peach, that pear tree that I'm gonna be removing. And then down in this section right here is another good spot for maybe a hydrangea, but definitely some of the lantana up front. And we'll probably, we're gonna get some other stuff and put in there, but this needs to be all be cleaned up really good. And then moving here, we planted this in front of the beds a couple years ago, and it's just, it keeps getting overgrown. So we really need to focus on, I wanna focus on this half next year and just get that done. And in the back, we're gonna do some brush cutting and stuff and removal. And then we're gonna try and get some stuff in there. I've got a butterfly bush that I transplanted. So in a couple of years, it'll start taking off. I made this section this year and I haven't planted it, but I just started clearing it. So we're gonna do a foundation planning and we're gonna do up here, right where the cat's laying. And then each year we'll kind of go out more. So I'm not so sure if I'm gonna go ahead and kill the grass or leave it. But this fall, we're gonna try and plant this whole section here. And then on this side too, we're gonna plant up again so we can have like a walkway through that arch going all the way through. And here's something else that I actually want to, this is my rosemary. So I'll probably end up doing a little bit of that too. I'll end up propagating this and I'm gonna do it the same way. I would just cut this and then remove the leaves and stick it in some soil. Now that I saw that I'm definitely gonna do it because where I live, rosemary is a perennial. And it comes back and it just, it never dies. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. And the fire pit is the last area. So we were making like a fire pit area. We made it, it got really bad overgrown. You've probably seen in the background of a lot of the videos that the grass was probably three feet high in here. So we've killed it with vinegar and then we're gonna come through and clean it out. And we're gonna make some actual seating that won't blow around because that's always been a huge headache. And we're gonna, gonna put in lighting in with planters on the bottom. And we've got to figure out the, the design for that. And then actually I thought about this too with the lighting, cause it's gonna be a planter with a pole going up. And then what we'll do is we're probably put a shade cloth over it. 
Because this, I mean, from here until 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock tonight, it just gets nothing but sun. So it cooks. And this is a dead spot in the yard. And when I mean dead spot, I mean we don't really use it until fall and winter. But I would like to be able to sit under it in the summertime, you know. And so the thought process was if we put a little bit more effort into it, then it's something that we're going to be able to keep up with and we'll want to keep up with. So we're going to work on that. And that's going to be a pretty, it's not going to be a big project. It's going to be kind of time consumption. But I think when it's all said and done, it's going to add that nice structure and create another room inside of the house, inside of the yard that we want, where we can kind of separate and get into a different area to chill.